We're located at 313 Jones Avenue. Love to have you come and fill some of these vacant seats that we've got here. We've got a seat for you. Love to have you. Thanks for tuning in today. Wherever you might be, you might be on a smartphone, an iPad, an iPhone, a computer. What else would they be on, David? What do you reckon they'd be on? TV. TV. Uh, well, whatever. Wherever you are, we welcome. David's going to lead us through the scene. Glad to have you. Come on, David. Lead. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad you're here with us to worship. As you can tell, Reed is not with us. He is, uh, woke up sick yesterday and a little worse today. So uh, please keep him in your thoughts and prayers and uh, thoughts for a quick recovery. So we've got a little change in the, in the uh, plan of worship and music. Um, so if you have a bulletin, half of it's right, half of it's not. So we're going to start out with 10,000 reasons. Please stand and join us if you're ready.
don't you? And all God's people said, Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I know there's some folks in South Carolina who are in mourning today, but those of us in Texas sick them, baby. <laughs> I mean, what can I tell you? We, and we didn't play yesterday, so we're still <laughs> and having a wonderful, it may be different this time next week, but our sympathy is still over. We're glad, so glad you're here. Right now, you may be comfortable just giving a high five or a bump, but you may like to shake hands. Whatever you like to do in greeting one another, Take just a moment. Since we don't have a piano, you want you, you and I can play heart and soul. <laughs> Go ahead and speak to one another. All right, we're glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> suggestion and I kind of like this we're going to let everybody vote uh, and we're going to give you a, in, in the coming weeks maybe at maybe the first Sunday of November we're going to give you a piece of paper and pencil and we're going to let you decide what we need to name the mystery room right okay? and, for, and the one the name that gets the most votes is what we'll call it okay so that way we won't have to keep saying that room or this room or the fellowship room or mystery or banquet room. So whatever. So that way we can all be part of that, okay? I think we'll have a lot of fun. So anyway, we got you can read the announcements there. Don't we can listen to me. Next Sunday, five to seven, one of our greatest outreaches that we have for the community. We hope we need as many of you as can be here to help us. We still need some potato chips. Isn't that right, Miss Ruby? Potato chips. Ruffles have ridges. And if you can just get one, that, and you might get the, the potato chip thing that says you, you can't eat, but you can't eat only one. I think that's Lay's or something like that. But please, just plain potato chips, okay? We've got plenty. Uh, Ruby has been eating it, James Allen has. But, Please, if you can help us replace what they did eat, those rascals come down here and they did 
you know, when you see them and you're walking down the hall and you say, how are you? And, you know, so anyways, uh, we just want to encourage you to help us out. We, you wanted to say something um, about, uh, Deborah, about our, our boxes. Come on. Mm -hmm. Can't, well, of course you can sit. You may do anything you want to. So. <laughs> Okay, no, November 7th is fast approaching. We've got, I think, two weeks. Uh, we'd like to have the shoe boxes completed. Uh, there's completed boxes here on the stage. There are empty boxes back there in the serving windows. Uh, if you haven't gotten a box yet, please pick one up, or if you want to do an extra one, but the rest of the boxes will be taken care of through the Faithful Friends Sunday School class. But please remember, each box we need to include $9 for uh, shipping and handling. Uh, and you can put it in the offering plate in an envelope marked postage for Christmas shoe boxes. And the church will write a check for, for all of them. Thank you. And really, this what a wonderful opportunity for us. Again, you don't know where in the world those things are going. You can certainly put uh, your picture of your family in there. And if you don't want to put your home address, you can put a PO box or the address of the church. You could put uh, uh, Doug Johnson, for example, 313 Jones <laughs> Avenue, Greer, South Carolina. You really, and once it comes here, we'll make sure you get the letter if you put a picture uh, of yourself in, in there. So I, I encourage you to do all that. But again, next week is going to be, um, it's a busy week, and I know that the world calls the 31st Halloween, but we're going to call it the Fall Festival. We're going to have a wonderful time. And I hope you'll be here, okay? Really, we need everybody to come. And you don't even have to dress up. Just come on just like you are. Scary enough. And so we um, we'll trust that uh, you will be here. Also, we continue. Our, our playground is set with the, the only exception is we've got to get a fence up. That's the only thing we need. And we probably need about $3,500, give or take, Jordan, would you say? And... Um, our, our playground will be ready to go. So we're, we're so, well, it's ready to go now. We just are looking to put a fence up there to keep everything safe. Otherwise, I think that you can see all of this. You see particularly that the date in November that Ms. Bowling, Tia Bowling, has asked you, having a paint party, uh, RSVP, you see it there by the 2nd of November. They'll call your house and call your cell number, right? And uh, if you give her a call, if you don't have it, we've got the number here, and she's here to see her. But make sure you RSVP by the 2nd of November. Other than that, we're praying for Reed today. Again, as David was sharing with us, a little under the weather. And so we want to remember him in our prayer. Also today, Pat Brown. Uh, that, that dear lady fell again. Uh, yes, yeah, she did, and she really, uh, on, and it hurt. Not, you know, she has this in a black little strap on cast, and she messed up some fingers and got some stitches and all of that. So, Pat, if you're, if you're watching today, we love you and we miss you. I'm trying to stay off the ground next time. That's your <laughs> sweetheart. I, <laughs> I know that happens. But, anyways, we, we miss you and uh, we love you. This morning, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. He is so good. He, now let's not forget just how good he is. He is a wonderful, gracious, almighty. So this is an opportunity. We'll pay, take just a moment before I offer a vocal prayer. But as we bow our heads, you just speak to the Lord very briefly. Then I'll interrupt you wherever you are in your prayers. And come before the Lord. Speaking to him for all of us right now. Let's bow our heads as we go through the prayer. Take just a moment. Speak. I speak. Mercy, you've heard the prayers of millions, billions around this world who appeal to you. 
Maybe they're asking you for the granting of more patience in their life. We remember well those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So there are folks who are in need of renewal. But in order to achieve that, there has to be waiting. And quite frankly, we human beings just don't like to wait. So I pray for those who need your intervention to grant them patience and waiting so that they can renew their, their life. We also thank you, Lord, for the way you work in our midst. We pray for those who are under the weather today. Lead, we pray for him today. Pat, Brown. there are many of us, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm not over trying to overlook anyone. Just collectively, we bring their names before you. We do thank you for our church family. We thank you for the way you're working. I pray that as we prepare our hearts for next Sunday afternoon, that even now, you will begin preparing us, I believe, for great numbers of children and parents as they come. We're excited about their being here. But more than that, we pray if there's a child, if there's a young person, a mom or dad, who does not know you personally as Lord and Savior, oh my, what joy it would be to have one, to have five or ten, ask you into their hearts, Lord and Savior. So it's with great anticipation we submit to you. We submit completely and hope. We sell ourselves out to you. We love you. We adore you. There's no one above you. We offer ourselves as living sacrifices. And we make our prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
people have to say. Amen. I enjoyed that, see? I enjoyed that very much. That was fun. Be careful now. Barbara's going to have surgery in about four or five weeks on those knees. Are you sure you don't need your cane up here? Hold on to that ring. <laughs> God is good. Now listen, in just a moment we're going to have her off, uh, receive our offering. Some of you have already brought it up. That's great. How does this happen? Now listen, I do want the children now. I want children. So, so important. Mamas and daddies, grandmas and granddaddies, whoever you might be, I want these children to have offering envelope every single week. I want these children to come up here placing the offering. I want them to, to know it is an act of worship. And you may have to put the nickels in that. Oh, no, don't, don't be chintzy like that. Because if they see you putting in nickels and dimes, that might be all they put in when they become 21, 25, and 30. And think, with well, the Lord's house, I'd just give a little bit. No, you're going to give everything you possibly can give. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to have prayer. And then normally read the play. I think Barry got me a little, little music to... To give your love offerings by. <laughs> Some have given. Thank you so much already. This is an opportunity to please. And if children aren't prepared this Sunday, mamas and daddies, grandmas and grandmas, I don't care, make them ready and prepared next week. I want the children to participate in this. If the child is in here, I want the child to participate, okay? We'll let you get by this week if they're not ready. But next week, I want the children to participate. Even if you have to walk up here with them, okay? I want to start them now. Because if indeed they're here 20 years from now, I'll be in glory. Well, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'll either be here in glory. I won't be in any other place. But there may be some of you who aren't here. You want to make sure this church continues, right? Well, then... Let's make sure the kids and young people know it's time to give, okay? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, our offering we bring to you. There's no reservation, no hesitation. We bring it because we love you. And we pray that you're going to use the dollars, first of all, to send missionaries around the world. You're going to use our dollars to send missionaries right here in our great country. You're going to take our dollars... And you're going to help all the six seminaries around this country to, uh, to teach young men and women and train them up as missionaries and pastors and teachers and music directors. All these monies that we give are going for the kingdom. And then right here at El Bethel. So please accept our offerings as we bring them. In Christ's name, amen. Come on, if you haven't had the opportunity, come on. If you have buildings fun over there, his office line up here. Come on. And the kids, if they're not ready, come out of boy. Come on. I want these kids up here. Come on, out of boy. I'm proud of you, honey. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sweetheart. Very good. So very important. They learn to do this. Thank you, honey. That a boy. Thank you, honey. Thank you very much. Thank you. So important. Giving, giving the offering it isn't just about mama and daddy giving. It's about all of us giving. Thank you, Harper. And uh, Sadie, I know she made her offering as good as Sunday school. I'm so grateful. For Sunday school teachers that are teaching our boys and girls, our young people, about the importance of giving. And and please never underestimate the gifts that these children give. God's going to use them in a marvelous way. So make sure everybody's ready to give for the next week. And again, if you help them, if, if, if they get a, an allowance, I want you to start teaching these kids about 10%. Okay? Uh, if you have a dollar, you give 10 cents of that to the Lord, right? If your allowance is ten dollars a week, you give one dollar. At minimum, you want to give more, but minimum one dollar. Okay. And so what we're doing is we're teaching everybody. All right.
The message of the morning is quite easy, but deep. You're going to have to listen because you're saying, this doesn't apply to me, but it might. The message of the day is simply, have you quit going to church? That's a fair question. I know you hear that couple of times. Have you quit going to church? Where's your mind right now? Is it Popeye's? You won't get some of that little chicken at 7 o'clock. I mean, is, is it back home? Do you have something in the crock pot? Well, the fact of the matter is you've been on automatic pilot for the last 10 years. You just know on Sunday the alarm rings, you get up, you go through your daily chores, you come on in here on automatic pilot, take your seat. Have you quit going to church? We're going to Psalm 92. Oh, it's a great psalm. I'm going to just read verses 12 through 15. If you're able, let's stand as we honor the reading of God's word. If you're able to stand. All right, now listen very carefully. All right. Beginning verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Wow, that verse is for me. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Now, come on. If you're 65 old, that's got to make you feel good. Come on. Listen to verse 15. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. May God bless to us the reading of his holy, inspired, error free word. And let's bow our heads and pray. We just so love you so much. Of course, we know how much you love us. And I pray you'll bless us in our time of study this morning. We adore you, Lord Jesus. That is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. A man once told his wife, he said, Honey, I never want to be in a vegetated state dependent upon a machine. He said, If I ever get in a shape like that, I want you to pull the plug. She got up and unplugged the TV. Oh, my. <laughs> get that. Did you hear about my pastor friend, Keith Kelly? He's pastor down there at his vineyard church. Uh, Keith's a great friend of mine. He was in the middle of one of his sermons when he noticed a man had literally fallen asleep and he had planted his head on his wife's shoulder. So Keith pointed out to her and said, wake up your husband. And she said, Keith, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you about this one. This was told by a, a cop friend of mine. Um, the Pope had come to a very small town in upstate South Carolina. And uh, they were getting the Pope's luggage and putting it in the back of the limousine. The Pope realized that he was in upstate South Carolina and he knew nothing could be fine than to be in Carolina in the morning. And so he was putting his luggage in the back seat and in, in the trunk. And he went up to the limo driver and he said, uh, I'd like to drive if you don't mind. <laughs> the limo driver said, Oh, I, we can't do that, Your Excellency, because, you see, I'm hired. I have a license to drive you around. And the Pope said, no, 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 my child. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I'll intercede on your behalf. Just let me drive it. He said, I promise you, young man, if you'll let me drive this car, there's something in it for you. 
Well, the limousine, the limousine driver said, well, all right. And so sure enough, he got in the back seat and the Pope said, you got your seat belt on? He said, I sure do. Pope said, all right, hang on, here we go. And boom, I mean, the Pope put the pedal to the metal. And I mean, before long, he was going 105 miles an hour. I mean, he was, and the guy in the back seat said, slow down, your holiness, slow down, you're going too fast, slow down, zoom, 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 zoom. Well, there was a patrolman that was very astute and finally got him pulled over. And when the cop pulled him over, the man in the back seat and limousine driver said, oh, I'm gonna lose my license for sure. Well, the Pope pulled over and rolled down his window and uh, he said, yes, he said to the policeman, yes, my son, what can I do for you? Well, the policeman looked and saw it was the Pope. Scared him to death, so he went back down on the radio and said, listen, get me the chief now. Get me the chief now. I said, what's wrong? He said, listen, I pulled a man over going 105 years old, and you won't believe it. Get me the chief. Well, the chief comes home, and the chief says, uh, what's so important? He said, chief, you won't believe this. I've got somebody really important in the back seat of that limousine. He said, I don't care how important it is. Give him a ticket. He said, no, chief, you don't understand. He, he, he's really got to be important. He said, well, is it the mayor? He said, oh, no, much bigger than that. Well, is it the governor? Oh, no, much bigger than that. Well, it could it be the president? Oh, no, it must be bigger than that. The chief said, well, who in the world is it? He said, I don't know. The Pope's driving must be God back there in the back seat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Heard that one before, I guess, huh? <laughs> you know, I've been doing this. It's hard to believe. End of this month. I've been doing this for 53 years. I believe. 53 years. I was 16 years old. You've heard me say that so many times. When I walked down and put my hand in the hand of my pastor and said, don't know exactly what he wants me to do, but I know he's calling me in the ministry. And I'm going to do my best. And so, oh yeah, I played some rock and roll and I played drums and I played with some groups and and I love rock and roll music. That offends you. I'm sorry, but I do. But my point is this. 53 years, I've been the same old sinner, saved by God's grace, then as today, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. But there's something I've learned in these 53 years. It's not profound, but listen, I've learned. People do what they want to do. People give to what they want to give to. People go to where they want to go. That's not profound, but it is the truth. You know and I know that I want, I'll do whatever I want to do. Such is life. You know, thinking about the message of the day. Now just go with me, stay with me for a moment. I know many people who are married. They're married a long time. Their marriage has died years ago. Are you with me? I know many people who are in nursing homes and nursing care facilities. Their lives were shattered by strokes, multiple falls, terrible disease, they can't walk, they can't talk, they can't eat, they can't even recognize their loved one. I say they died years ago. They just haven't been buried yet. Are you with me? How many of you have come to church, rhetorically I'm asking, but you know in the pit of your heart you came here on automatic pilot? Because it's Sunday. And you don't know anything else to do but come to church. And you're here this morning, but you know your mind is a million miles away. It's on anything and everything but what God's people are talking, talking about. Okay, maybe you've got loved ones 
who aren't feeling well, loved ones who are under the weather. But you know what I'm saying. You're here, and I see you. But my question to you is, have you quit coming to church? It's a fair question, I think. The psalmist, as he begins writing, think over in Psalm 92. Go back over there to verses 1 through 4 for just a moment. In Psalm 92, the very beginning of the psalm, look what it says. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hand. You know, You've heard me say so many times, when you get saved, God puts a song in your heart. He does. And there's something about Christians we love to sing. Matter of fact, we're one of the few, if you will, world religions. And remember, Christianity is really not a religion. We're a lifestyle. But for, um, to understand where I'm going with that, we as a world religion, or one of the few, maybe the only, who love to sing. Okay, the Buddhists, the Hindus change, but they don't sing. And the Bible tells us that there's something glorious about coming before the Lord and lifting our voices unto Him. It is good, he says, to give thanks. It's good just to be able to sing. You know, I didn't ask you if you could sing. The Lord just said, if you love him, you're going to make a job for all. You know, and so many of you can sing. I mean, you know, you can really carry a tune. Now, some of you can't. That's okay. You know, we got buckets and that still wouldn't help you. But my point is, you make a job for noise. Everybody make a noise. I mean, everybody here can make a noise. And there is no exception unless you're mute. You can make it up. And I, I'm saying all that to say to you, we, the, the psalmist is saying to us, we're like seeds planted in the ground. And we've got to grow. Because if we don't, we can be, I don't watch this program, my son does. I declare I thought I educated and trained him better than this. He walk, watches a program called The Walking Dead. I don't know how many, I hope you don't watch it, but if you do, oh, I hadn't figured it out yet. But it's called The Walking Dead. You know, this morning there was some Walking Dead coming in here. Oh, just face it. We got a whole lot more Walking Dead who don't come here at all. But one day they will when they are literally dead. That might be the last time they come. Maybe the only time. I don't know. But here's my point. If, if we are where God wants us to be, he wants to plant us. Isn't that what he's saying over here as he's wrapping up uh, this song as, he, as we just read a moment ago? He says, uh, uh, right here in verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. People who are planted flourish. People who are planted and God saw it all flourish. And he says that we're going to be, look at what he said, we're going to be like a, a palm tree. I don't want you to know about palm trees, but they can grow tall. I'm telling you, they can grow tall. And boy, they love warm climate. When we lived in Puerto Rico, you would believe some palm trees. But now listen, there's something interesting about palm trees. And it doesn't matter how hard the wind blows. I have seen palm trees. Now, this is no joke, folks. Now, you know, the palm tree is not quite straight. It kind of comes up like that. I have seen palm trees in hurricanes when we've been in the Caribbean and lived down there. I've seen palm trees almost bend all the way to the ground. Most unbelievable. I thought it would be gone in the morning. 
Wake up, the sky's blue, storm's gone, that palm tree just right back where it was. You see, palm trees know how to weather the storm. And if you're planted properly, you're going to know how to weather any storm that comes your way. Well, I'm not saying that you won't bend, but you won't break. You just won't. Bible Solomon says he wants us to be like a palm. He, he wants us to grow. He wants us to thrive. He wants us, wants us to achieve success, to prosper. And, you know, for people in Palestine, the palm tree has been called the representative tree of Palestine. You realize how far back palm trees go? Remember, they were taking the palms, and when Jesus came into Jerusalem that last time, they were singing their hosanna, waving the palm. Fascinating. It's been around for so long. And, and when we think about over in the book of Revelation, when the picture of the victorious children of God are given over there in the seventh and the ninth verse, it says that we will be clothed with white robes and palms in our hands. The palm tree can just overcome it and can overcome any storm, any wind, any rain, because it is, it's just in the ground so beautiful. Look what else, is, what else scripture says. He shall grow, not only like a palm tree, like a cedar in Lebanon. All right, if you're a palm, you're going to flourish. If you're a cedar of Lebanon, uh, Lebanon we are, look what it says here, we are, uh, we're going to grow like the cedar of Lebanon. I don't know what you know about cedar trees. I don't know a whole lot about them, except they can live to be about 600 years, sometimes more. Can you imagine that? Everybody likes to have their closets lined with cedar, I think. Cedar trees are fascinating. They're strong. They're beautiful. They're, they're, the wood is hard. The wood is expensive. It is very fragrant. It has a sweet smell to it. People use some of the resin, even to this day, in the Holy Land, to fight off mosquitoes, they rub it on them. They smell like trees, but they, but they don't stink like it with all and all that kind of stuff. And but they, they smell like a tree, and they use that to keep the mosquitoes away. I mean, the, the cedars of Lebanon, they are strong, sturdy trees, and they can they can be used for so many things. Did you know the Egyptians used the, if you will, the resin that comes from the cedar tree. Did you know that the Egyptians used that in, in the mummification process? I mean, cedar trees have been around a long time. And the Egyptians found how they could use them. The Pharaohs uh, learned that if they burned some of the uh, part of the tree, uh, the, 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 the thing that you take off the skin of the tree, it makes such a beautiful smell, gives off a beautiful fragrance. And they would use that as their offering. The Jewish priests, go back, find it. The Jewish priests were ordered by Moses to use the, uh, it, the, the cedar trees, the peel of the cedar tree. They were ordered by Moses to use that, not only in male circumcision, but also it was used for the treatment of lepros. Matter of fact, we're told, now it didn't stop leprosy, but it did stop uh, some time of the oozing uh, of some of those terrible sores. And sometimes we're told that the, the feel and even some of the, the resin that would, in, would be in some of the leaves were, were, would ease you. You see, when you're, listen, when, when you're planted, you're going to flourish. Simple as that. And if you're not, listen, you're not going to make it. Now, okay. Uh, maybe the Lord will have to take you to that spiritual woodshed when you get to glory because you really weren't planted. You tried to be. But you're not going to be planted if you do not find yourself involved in a local ecclesia. You've got to be involved in the church. Now, now if you go back, this is what the writer of the psalmist of the psalmist said. He was seeing the church as a place. 
And indeed, in Old Testament days, remember, the church was a place. We know today the Spirit of God lives here. But in the Old Testament, the, the Spirit of God lived in the building. And so he said, what a joy it is for me to go into the church house and celebrate and sing and hear the instruments being played. How many this? You miss church. You're going to miss what God's doing here. Now, those of us who are here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, we know he's involved, and we know he's doing something wonderful. You need to know that. If you're not, if you're, just telling you folks, just tell them what the word says. I'm not chastising, I'm not fussing. I'm just simply trying to relate to you what God's word says. If you're, if you're planted, you're going to flourish. Second, very quickly this morning. People who are planted grow. If you come to the Little John home uh, over there uh, in, uh, in the big city of Dover, and you come into our house, you have to come through the, uh, through the uh, garage, and you walk in, the second door on your left is the laundry room. And when you walk into the laundry room, you'll say, well, this is nice, everything's neat. And then you turn around and look at the wall and you'll say, what got loose in here? Now, did you hear me? I said, people who are planted grow. On our wall in the laundry room, we started back in 2005 when Garrett, who just turned 18 yesterday, he would stand up against the wall and we would put the ruler and draw a line and put his initial and the date. And then the second grandchild came along, now the third grandchild, and we do that. And if you look on our wall, we can show you how they have grown over the years. It's amazing. We would be petrified if we put them against the wall and they they hadn't grown. It scares us to death. And yet, why is it we're satisfied as born again believers not to grow? Why is it? Are you growing? That's a fair question. Now, I've only known you for about a year and a couple of months, and I love you dearly. And I don't know where you were five or ten years ago, okay? I know where you are today, and I know where you were about a year ago. My question to you is, are you growing? Are you growing in the wisdom and the stuff? Hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to judge anybody anymore. I'm trying to judge myself. But if you are, if, if you're planted, you're not only flourishing, you are growing. That's what he says. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They'll grow like a, a cedar tree. Are you, when it's all said and done, are you closer to the Lord today than you were last week? Are you closer to the Lord today than the day you walked down the aisle and joined this church? Some people will attend the church for years and won't grow an inch. Some people will come to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and they will never grow spiritually. They'll still have the same terrible attitude, the same terrible temper, the same outlook, the same problems. Listen to me. You know you're growing. You'll know you're growing when people say, oh, that's, he's different. Well, I, when I saw him last Christmas, <laughs> when I saw him last Thanksgiving, and then see I saw him last night and said, he's different. You know, she's more loving. She, she spoke to me. She asked me how I was doing. And she looked me in my eyes when she talked to me. Are you growing? Or are you just going along? Quick, people who are planted produce fruit. Now look at that. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Now listen, 
That makes me feel so good for a man of my age. I can still bear fruit. And I can still flourish. And I'm proud of that. I am so proud. I know what Isaiah 40 says. Uh, uh, there at verse 30. Those that wait upon the Lord, I said that in our prayer, uh, shall renew their strength. But it is so true. It sounds like it would be different than it. Uh, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, that's so true. When I got saved, I mounted up with wings like eagles. I did. I did. I see. 13 and I rededicated at 16 and more than nothing that could stop me from sharing the gospel. So I mean, I would fly with the wings of evil. I got a little older in my 30s and into my 40s, hit 50, and uh, I was I was not only had I mounted up with wings like evil, I was running, I wasn't getting weary. Yet as my 50s turned to 60. The sixties will soon one day turn to seventy. I'm gonna walk and not think. You see. And while I'm walking, I've got more time. And while I've got more time, I've got more time to grow. People who are planted produce fruit. I'm not a, a fruit inspector, nor are you. The Bible doesn't give anybody a license to do that. But it's fair if you at least take inventory of your life. What are you, I mean, who are you encouraging? What, what do you have to show for your Christian experience? What do you have to show? Lastly, people who are planted stay fresh. I love that. Now, I just do it. That tells me if the Lord lets me to, to, to be 80 years old or 90 years old, I'm going to still be as fresh. And my wife's going to love me even more. I'll just tell you that right on the face. Now think about it. There's no time that life stops. And there's no time that I quit growing. You know, if I quit growing as a Christian, Lord, take me home. I mean, I want to get deeper in the Word. And, and I hope and pray. And I know we live in a day and age. I'm so taking, I'm sorry. I know we live in a day and age where this is the digital age. And I know we come here with, with uh, um, phones, cell phones, and we have Bible apps. And I think it's wonderful and great. I'm not asking you about that. But I do want to ask you, what about your Bible reading and Bible study at home? What about it? What do you do? Okay. I'm not asking you to read Charles Stanley's latest book or David Jeremiah's latest book. I'm not asking you if you've been reading Charles Swindoll's, Chuck Swindoll's book of devotion. I'm asking what are you doing in daily Bible reading? Are you getting down into the soil and the subsoil of God's Word and are you, are you responding to the nutrients that are there in the soil and the subsoil of God's Word? Are you growing? Do people say, does your family see it? Do your kids see it? Do your grandkids see it? I'm, they're, they're the best barometer there is. Heaven. They know you. You know. Are you growing? That's a fair issue. That's a fair question. I'm going to have to stop there. And i leave this question with you. The same question I began the message with. Have you quit going to church? Time will tell what El Bethel has to show. Thank you, Jesus. You're so gracious and you're so good. And this morning, Lord, I come to you as somebody who has not arrived and probably never will. But one thing I do know. I'm not the same Benny Little John that surrendered back that last Sunday of October 1968. I'm not the same Benny Little John I hope and pray 
that started here at El Bethel back in August of 2020. I hope I'm not the same Ben and Little John next Sunday, October 31st, and I am today, October 24th. I hope there is growth. And it will come because of the nutrients that are found in your word. Lord, may it never be said, may I never feel that I've quit going to church. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you stand with me, please? If you're able, if you are able, please stand. Would we'll not remain seated. If you're here and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, of course you're not going to grow. You can't. How are you going to grow if Jesus isn't your Lord and Savior? Fair question. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've never said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I want to be born again. I want to be afresh. I want to be new. I want to walk forward right now. I like giving that invitation every time we meet. Walk forward. I'm away. Would you just take a moment with your head bowed and eyes closed? Just to offer the Lord a, a moment of rededication, personal rededication to Him. To be better this week for Him than you've been ever before. To ask Him to help you maintain that. That's my prayer. closer to you tomorrow than I am today. I want to love you more Wednesday than I love you on Tuesday. I want to worship you more next Sunday than I am on this morning. Draw me close and keep me close because I'm such a sinner but I thank you for saving me. Your mercy and your grace on me. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Listen to me. We're going to have a lot of fun on next Sunday afternoon. We'll hear that again next Sunday. Wednesday night, we're going out, right, Jordan? We're going out, Kate, and we're going to hand out more flyers. Did you hand out many in Spanish? No, I did. But, but you have them in Spanish, right? I, we can fix the, 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 the brochure in Spanish. And uh, we need that. I mean, you know, we have such a Hispanic population here in Greer. Maybe we can go to Lodica and we can go to uh, uh, Gran Toro. Uh, we shop at some of these Mexican restaurants, uh, Mexican grocery stores. And we all just take, take some and go, go today. And, uh, you know, and so uh, we're hoping to have not just folks that speak uh, uh, English, but uh, speak in Spanish as well. So, anyway, we hope you'll be here. We really do. And we look forward to that. See you Wednesday night. They're going out at 6.30. We'll be here. Don't forget the prayer meeting at 10 as well. We had such a wonderful meal. You won't do that every Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, we just, listen, I, you'd have thought they brought a bus on Wednesday morning. But we had supper and lunch, and Kathy did so good. We're grateful. I want you to go out and have a great day. Yes, sir, we have a meeting in the mystery room right after this. Everybody involved, please, at a help state, meet in the mystery room 10 minutes or less as we talk about the 31st. Let's bow right here for a closing prayer. Well, loving Father, we, we're just honored to be in your house. and We just thank you for the way you love us. And we acknowledge that you are King of King and Lord of Lord. And now, as we're the church gathered, in just a moment, we'll be the church gathered. I pray that our God walk will match our God talk. And I pray in life's labors and in life's leisures, we'll always understand that we're on a mission as we are right now about to leave for the field of mission. There are people outside this door who are wanting to see Jesus in us. May we not disappoint. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great day.